Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 Edition. Page 549. Alright, now we're going to talk about the pulmonary circulation. Now before we move on in the book, let's just quickly talk about the picture you see on your screen. This explains the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. So let's just briefly take a look at this. Now let's start with the systemic circulation and let's start in the left atrium. Now as we know and most people will already know the systemic circulation, the way it works is the blood comes in, this is all oxygenated blood, it comes in from the lung and it comes into the left atrium, goes into the left ventricle and out through your aorta and it supplies your entire body. So the blood goes to all the tissues in your body. Uh, from that aorta. So it goes to your brain, it goes to your hands, arms, legs, and this is all oxygenated blood. So all this blood is going to the body to give it sufficient amount of oxygen. Now once the body, you know, for example, the brain, the hands, the legs, once it uses that oxygenated blood, now it has to return the blood back to the lungs for it to get oxygenated again. So the way it does that is now the deoxygenated blood comes in to the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava, it meets in the right atrium, goes to the right ventricle, out through your pulmonary arteries, and they're called pulmonary arteries even though they have deoxygenated blood, is because they're taking the blood to the lungs. So pulmonary artery will take the blood to your lungs where it will get oxygenated again, uh, and it will come back to the heart at the left atrium. So this is how the cycle works. Oxygenated blood goes throughout the entire body, comes back as deoxygenated, gets pumped to your lungs, and that there it again gets oxygenated. So these are the two different circulations, is the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. The pulmonary circulation is the part where the heart is pumping the blood from the heart to the lungs. So that's your pulmonary circulation, and the way it goes through your entire body would be the systemic circulation. So basically looking at this picture, you should be able to understand all those little concepts that will explain the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Now let's go a bit deeper in understanding the difference in the two circulations. There are a couple of important things to understand when talking about these two different circulations, whereas in systemic circulation, when there is hypoxia, so if a tissue is not getting enough blood, what it'll do is there's going to be vasodilation, and vasodilation allows more blood to go to that area. Alright, so that's simple enough. Now in the lungs, what happens is when there is hypoxia, it's counterproductive for blood to go there because if they, that area is hypoxic, it's not going to be able to do justice to reoxygenate that area. Now looking at the pulmonary circulation, you see that the blood that's going to the lungs, it's all deoxygenated blood, right? So if deoxygenated blood is going to areas that does not have oxygen, it does not help getting these this blood to get oxygenated. Right, so think about it again. Deoxygenated blood is going to an area that the uh, area of the lungs that does not have oxygen. So, deoxygenated blood going to area of the lung that does not have enough oxygen does not make any sense. So, what happens is in the lungs there is the opposite thing, where if there is hypoxia, there if there is not enough oxygen in certain areas of the lung, the blood will not go there, and instead. This area will vasoconstrict and it will send the blood to an area that actually does have more oxygen. So that's the main difference that should be understood between the two different circulations. Whereas in systemic circulation, there's going to be vasodilation, which allows more blood to go there, so it could perfuse that area. Whereas in the pulmonary circulation, it's not going to allow blood to go to hypoxic areas and therefore it will shunt the blood to more oxygenated areas so that deoxygenated blood will now be able to get oxygenated. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So 